Hello, my name is Ian McCall and this is another video from the Dermoscopy Made Simple series. Today we're going to look at amelanotic melanomas. Now, first thing to say is these are very difficult to diagnose either clinically or dermatoscopically. So what it boils to, down to is that basically any pink or red lesion that is EFG elevated, firm and growing should be biopsied if you can definitively diagnose it as some benign lesion. Now, most amelanotic melanomas are actually hypomelanotic. Most of them have a wee bit of pigment associated with them, uh, you know, some lines or tick uh, surrounding them. And dermatoscopically, what you've got to look for also are varying shades of pink structureless within some of these lesions, or vessels that are polymorphic and have dot vessels as well. Now, most of these lesions uh, in melanotic melanomas, uh, at least in my experience, are usually nodular, but uh, flat variants can occur and we'll show you some of these uh, later in this presentation. So, let's have a little look at some. Here is your clinical, a pink area that's developed adjacent to um, a little brown uh, macule in the skin and when you have a look uh, at here, here you've got some thickened hyperpigmented lines reticular but it's not terribly marked but in this area here you've got some polymorphic vessels and dot vessels now this question of polymorphic vessels you're going to take my word for it to some extent it's often very difficult to actually show you uh, these let's just try and show you these ones You've certainly got some dot vessels scattered throughout this. You've got these little white lines here which can be of some importance in melanomas. Here you've got different types of vessels and you've got a small serpentine vessel there as well. So I'd classify these as polymorphic plus some dot vessels. And uh, that's enough often to make your diagnosis of a hypomelanotic melanoma. Anything where you've got pink and brown coming together um, is well worth having a good look at from the point of view of uh, of an amelanotic or hypomelanotic melanoma. Let's see some other examples. Um, this is a Seb K here. I think that's a Seb K there. I thought that was a Seb K too, and I actually thought this was going to be a bit of SCC in situ um, in, in, on this person's back. But uh, in point of fact, when we then had a little look at, uh, at this area, let's make it a little bit bigger. We've got quite a few dot vessels scattered in this. A lot of white uh, in here again. Um, some linear vessels here. Again, some dot ones. I thought this was polymorphic. If it had been SCC in situ, I would have expected a whole lot of either dot or uh, coiled uh, vessels. This little bit here was lined reticular. Um, you can see it here, lined retic, whereas this bit down here was in fact part of a seborrheic keratosis. So this again was uh, an amelanotic melanoma. This person had another melanoma, uh, an in situ melanoma, but a more conventional one, um, quite close to, to where this one was in the back. Then you get this one. We've put this up before to show white lines, and the white lines were part of a desmoplastic melanoma. Um, but this was how the lesion presented here. Pink, slightly scaly, now it's there, pink. And pink, this was slowish growing though, it wasn't fast growing. But it was elevated in pink, that's enough of the EFGs to merit having a look at. There were some dot vessels in here as well, there's some uh, lines retic round about and these white lines merited uh, a biopsy in this, but it was a desmoplastic melanoma. And sometimes they can be pink as well. Now here's another lesion. Uh, let's make this just a touch bigger as well. Okay. Now, here 
is your congenital nevus, pinkish, and here's this pink nodule that's developed within it. When you look at your dermoscopy, let's look around here, these are the curved vessels that you'd expect to see in a congenital or uh, a dermal nevus. So the curved vessels are all in this part. And then you've got these atypical vessels here. I'm not sure that I'd really call them truly polymorphic. There's, although you could say that one's spiral uh, or helical there. Um, it's not really lines branched. There's a curved vessel there. Um, there may be a hairpin vessel there. There's certainly a serpentine vessel there. I suppose it's polymorphic enough. No real dot vessels in here, though. But this was a nodular, small pink nodular melanoma developing within a congenital nevus. Um, this image is courtesy of uh, Stelios Minas. And another one that's uh, come from the blog as well. Just need to make this a bit bigger. No, too big. Take it back one. Okay, let's have a little look at this. This was a pink nodule that developed with this brown halo. And when you have a look at it, you have this vessel here called a corkscrew vessel. You've got this pink, relatively amorphous uh, area. Perhaps a little blue clod there. Um, a surrounding lines retic network. You can see the net-like network there. Well, this was a, a melanoma um, developing, an emelanotic uh, melanoma developing again in a congenital nevus. This was a case uh, courtesy of Harold Kittler and the blog. So we've seen some there that have been raised, and now here's another one that certainly led me astray. This is the actual lesion here. It's outlined. You can see the pinkish outline of this lesion on a lady's neck. This is done after she's actually had a little punch biopsy there. I had thought this was a biggish area of SCC inside you, but this was the histology. Um, you can see these nests of uh, melanoma cells here. And this was a very extensive amelanotic melanoma uh, on the neck presenting like a patch of SCC inside you. I don't have a good dermoscopy thing because a dermoscopy view should have shown just the coiled vessels if all of that had been SCC inside you as against the mixture of vessels that you see in a, an amelanotic melanoma. This is a big graft that she subsequently had uh, placed here um, when this was widely uh, excised. So, amelanotic melanomas can be flat and look like SCC inside you. Let's flick through a few others here. Again, another pink lesion that's developed with a little bit of brown round about it. Pink and brown you've certainly got to look carefully at the pink, and they can be subtle. Now, again, there's your brownish network roundabout, and this is the pink portion here. There are some dot vessels in here. I don't think I can really make them big enough to be polymorphic. Let's just have a little look at this. Well, again, if you look carefully, there's a, a serpentine vessel there. Um, that one's a bit coiled, so is that one and that one. You know, I think, you know, when you're looking at something a little bit post hoc like this, you may well sort of see the, the vessels that you want to see. But, um, you know, they're not all dot vessels, they're not all coiled vessels. Um, and this can be the subtle sort of vascular picture that you'll see in a hypomelanotic melanoma. So pink and surrounding brown, if you can't definitively say that it's SCC inside you or BCC, superficial BCC, then you've got to assume that it's uh, an amelanotic melanoma. Sometimes the vessels are a little bit better. Um, let's have a look at this one. Here was a new pink lesion that had developed on a lady's back. She's got other nevi here. But this one was a bit lonely. Uh, it was the only one of its kind. And then when you stuck, so again, a uh, pink lesion in the back. It's usually a superficial BCC or perhaps an SCC inside you, but superficial BCC would be commonest. But then you have a little look with your dermatoscope here, and you start to get a mixture of dot vessels 
um, some linear vessels here, not really truly linear branched vessels. Um, again, you wouldn't expect dot vessels on a superficial BCC. You'd expect fairly sharply focused linear branched. But there was enough here to, uh, for Wayne Michaeljohn, whose, image, whose uh, patient this is, to in fact diagnose beforehand that this could be an amelanotic melanoma. There's a little surrounding tinge of pigmentation here. And that's in fact what it was, level 2 is 0 0.3 millimeters thick. So you've just got to be aware of these lesions and how they present. We'll finish up just with two more. This was a pink lesion on a lady's forearm. It had been relatively new and she had gone down to uh, her GP about this. I think the GP thought it might be um, a lichenoid keratosis and did this punch biopsy from the middle of it. Um, but, and so we're looking at this afterwards. But you can see a bit of pigmentation round about, although not exactly, oh, yes, there are some light retics there. You've got some dot vessels in here. This is the biopsy, which tends to distort things a little bit. Some white lines and the like as well. So not necessarily the picture that you would see in a lichen planus like keratosis, although you'll certainly get dot vessels in a lichen planus like keratosis, and it is, um, you know, one of uh, uh, one of the, the acute phase of an LPLK. It is one of the differentials of uh, an amelanotic melanoma. So this was a close-up of uh, of the lesions uh, that we were seeing here. But let's end up with a much more obvious amelanotic melanoma. And this one is courtesy of uh, Dr. Ben Cook, and again it comes from the blog. Here you've got this pink nodule. I think this grew within a period of six to eight weeks. This is a close-up of it, you know, pink, no brown at all that we can really see around about uh, this, at least not with a naked eye. You can always see some vessels here. And then when you put the dermatoscope on it, a mixture of pink and white, um, certainly most unusually shaped vessels here. No real, very few dot vessels. You know, we usually like polymorphic vessels and dot vessels to be absolutely certain. But, you know, elevated, firm and growing, rapidly growing pink nodule. You see that in the arms, the back, an elderly person. That's a melanotic melanoma until proven otherwise. And that's what it was, a level 3, two, surprise it's not even deeper, 2.3 millimeter thick nodular amelanotic melanoma. So the pink nodule, elevated, firm and growing. But remember that you can't get your flat amelanotic uh, melanoma as well, as in, remember our lady here with this one on the neck that looked like an SCC inside you. So you've just got to be aware of these lesions. Not all melanomas are going to have pigment with them. Most amelanotic melanomas are actually hypomelanotic melanomas. But anything that's pink, elevated, firm, and growing has to be biopsied. If you keep that uh, little admonition in mind, then you shouldn't run into too much trouble in missing these. You'll at least think about it. And then it's an excisional biopsy to uh, try and confirm your diagnosis. The earlier you pick these, the better the prognosis for the patient. Thank you very much.